The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 139 O Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You mark out my journeys and my resting place and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but you, O Lord, know it altogether. You encompass me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, so I that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit or where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make my, the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me. Your right hand hold me fast. If I say surely the darkness will cover me and the light around me turn to night. Even darkness is no darkness with you. The night is as clear as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. For you yourself created my innermost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I thank you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvellous are your works, my soul knows well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my form as yet unfinished, already in the book were, my, were all my members written. As day by day they were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How deep are your counsels to me, O God? How great is the sum of them? If I count them, they are more in number than the sand, and at the end I am still in your presence. O oh, that you would slay the wicked, O God, that bloodthirsty might depart from me. They speak against you with wicked intent. Your enemies take up your name for evil. Do I not oppose those, O Lord, who oppose you? Do I not abhor those who rise up against you? I hate them with a perfect hatred. They have become my own enemies also. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and examine my thoughts. See if there is any way of wickedness in me and lead me in the way everlasting. It's important when we read this psalm that we don't make it say something it's not saying or get distracted by some of the detailing. What this psalm is saying is God knew us before we were born. He knows every step we take. He knows every part of our lives. He already knew who we would be when we were still in our mother's womb. He knows us. He loves us. He cares about us. And in response, we love him. And, but we constantly keep ourselves in check and ask God to search us and to know our hearts and try to examine our thoughts. This psalm is not about law. This psalm is about God's love and God's knowledge and foreknowledge of our lives. So, uh, Proverbs 22 verses 1 to 16. A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches and favour is better than silver or gold. The rich and poor have this in common. The Lord is the maker of them all. The clever see danger and hide, but the wicked go on and suffer for it. The reward of, for humility and fear of the Lord is riches and honour and life. Thorns and snares are in the way of the perverse. The cautious will keep, them from, will keep far from them. Train children in the right way, and when they are old, they will not stray. The rich rules over the poor, and the borrower is the slave of the lender. Whoever sows injustice will reap calamity, and the rod of anger will fail. Those who are generous are blessed, for they share their bread with the poor. Drive out a scoffer, and strife goes out. Quarrelling and abuse will cease. Those who love a pure heart and are gracious in speech will have the king as a friend. The eyes of the Lord keep watch over knowledge, but he overthrows the words of the faithless. The lazy person says there is a lion outside, I shall be killed in the streets. The lips of a loose woman are a deep pit, with he with whom the Lord is angry falls into it. Folly is bound up in the heart of a boy, but the rod of discipline drives it far away. 
Oppressing the poor in order to rich oneself and giving to the rich will only lead to loss. Here is uh, Proverbs. Proverbs, remember, are truisms. The best chance you have for this to be true is to do this. So, for example, the reward for humility and fear of the Lord is riches and honour and life. Yet some people are humble and fear the Lord, yet never know riches, honour and life. But the best way to get real riches and real honour and real life, abundant life, is to fear the Lord. So I know some Christians are very um, damaged by this, this, this verse being preached as law, train up a child in the right way and when they're old they will not stray. And I know Christian parents who did their very best to train up their children in the right way. Yet those children, as far as we can tell, are not walking in the Lord now. But the best chance you have for your children to be walking in the right way, the best way you have for your children to grow up in the Lord's way is to train them from when they are young. Not always true, but Proverbs say this is the best chance you have of getting a good result. There are some who are generous, uh, but uh, at least in this world aren't blessed. Just wanted to uh, outline the difference between Proverbs and Promises. These verses are Proverbs. They are generally true. They, if you obey these, they give you the best chance of success but they are not promises and uh, don't take them as promises and don't allow yourself to be condemned because even though you did the first part, the result didn't come true or hasn't yet come true. Mark 7, 31 to the end. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went by the way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of Tecopolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears. And he spat and touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven and sighed and said to him, Epaphra, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one. But the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. Jesus here heals this man. He takes him aside and deals with him in private. Sometimes the Lord takes us aside and deals with us in private and heals us when no one else is watching. We give him thanks. Lord, we thank you for your dealings with us. Lord, we thank you for the words of wisdom in Proverbs. And Lord, we pray that we will always do our part. Uh, we will be generous to the poor. We will train up our children. We'll be humble and try and walk right before you. And Lord, we know that whether in this life or in eternity, we will receive our reward. Lord, we simply uh, want to do the very best we can. In Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>